So our next question is from Joanna. A question about the reduction of pile size with regards to how finely chopped the carbon ingredients need to be. How long does it take for the most resistant materials, big chunks to break down in a compost pile? Are we getting soil from, are we are getting soil from our three cubic meter piles, but still have some one to two inch hay pieces that were originally a foot long or more, have not broken down. Also, some matted roots have not broken down. Okay, so let's have a look at some reality here. Um, these are my compost piles that I've been putting together conveniently for my volunteer workers who are learning this. And um, I've used cages at the beginning here simply to make sure that they've got the volume right because they tend to get smaller and smaller like Chinese whispers if I don't keep an eye on them. So these are about one and a half to two meters in volume and this one's accumulating. A lot of this stuff's come out of the chicken pen so it's got manure with it. This one here is sitting there waiting. Now there are lots of ways you can compost. I've done you the 18 day compost. For my students here at the moment that doesn't work because they don't work at weekends. Um, so what we do is we put this cage together, brown, green manure, brain green manure. You can see the layers, brain green manure, brain green manure, brain green manure. And then we get it nice and wet and we normally cover it and we leave it a week because that's just what works for our system here. And after a week, we turn it on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. It's been turned today um, for three weeks. So it's a month, it's 30 days, um, but they're learning and they're not working every day and it works for their schedules. And one week like this, and after a week, it's turned on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday, and then it has a, a long weekend. <laughs> so there's a Sunday break. So, so this has been only turned once out of the pile still quite chunky then when we move along this has been turned twice put quite a lot of heat in there and then you can see it's changing color it's not losing size much and when you open it up it's holding moisture a lot better still got a bit of heat it's getting darker the next turn is considerably darker again but there's still some chunks in there. This probably isn't going to make it. Now, in the tropics, that will probably break down. In the subtropics, it's getting there. But if you're in a cold climate, these little branches, they're not going to break down. The cold climates, whether they're wet or dry, are not easily going to build up the same sort of heat and humidity. If you're in a really cold climate and you want to compost in winter, you've probably got to go inside a, a, a glass house or a plastic house. And if you have successional compost going through that, that early compost will be heating the actual atmosphere inside the glass house or plastic now. Now, topics, you can drop down wood, large wood almost. Over here, we're nearly done, but there's still some little bits left. And this one we're already adding to the garden. We've already taken from it. And um, remember, this is not just my compost. This is my students' compost. Um, so they're learning and we'd have to sieve this for a potting mix. And that's not bad. There's some chunks in there. Now remember, and you must remember this, that good compost is a life system. The best compost is full of a very large, the largest number of microorganisms and fungi. And because the fungi are almost not microscopic when they get full size, they're very long. And a great diversity of those, if you know. So it's an inoculum of life. It's not a dead element. It's not just soil amendment. Uh, in my hand, well, actually, in that tiny piece there, in that tiny bit, there's a billion organisms. It's ridiculous how much is in a small amount of compost if you look to a microscope. Uh, this is alive. If there is no organic matter here to feed it, there has to be something left to feed it. If there isn't, you better use it right now because it, it's going to starve. 
right? There has to be something left at the end. So these little chunky bits are quite okay. So your one to two inches of straw, they're fine. But if you want to put it on really fine seeds, like carrot seeds, you want to mix it with the sand you're planting your carrots with, you want to put it through a sieve. Here's a little bit of wood chip. That wasn't going to break down, but it's, it's soft. So if you want to make a potting mix out of it and you want to plant fine seeds in that potting mix, yes, yeah, sieve it and different size sieve it, sieves. But if you put this through the sieve, this will come out as fine, beautiful, fine material. I could show you that in the nursery. We sieve at different levels of uh, diff different size mesh sieves and you get finer and finer and finer material. True compost, I'll show you what true compost is. That's true compost. What's stuck in my fingerprints? If you look in the dictionary, it says compost is a colloid. It's colloidal. Soap is colloidal. That's what makes the water in, 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 in your wash basin go cloudy with soap. Those fine soap, soap particles are less than 15 microns in size. A, co a colloidal substance is made up of particles smaller than 15 microns. And they easily sit in your fingerprints. I've got millions of organisms inside my fingerprints right now. It's quite a good inoculum probably. I'll just get these organisms out of my fingerprint. There you go. That's just for you people that might be worried about the sterility of my compost. 